everybody to another episode of Remotely Renee. I am excited. Let me get my two lit crew in here early because we're starting off the show a little different today. So first up, we got my manager, Paul Garino, my snookabooka. Y'all already know that's me, Madre, but my snookabooka. And then my sister, Nicole Young. We're starting out this episode by taking shot, 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 shot. Shot, 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 shots, everybody, and listen to why we're taking shots. So, we're taking shots for the what is it called? The Husky Ticket Foundation. I'm not even sure if that's their exact. No, it's the Husky Ticket Project, and so they're a 501c3 that basically they're dedicated to ha- helping the Connecticut youth be able to go to UConn athletics. I think it's dope. 100 of the proceeds go to that. So they asked me to take a shot of hot sauce. So I'm not taking a shot of hot sauce by myself. We got the hot sauce here. Um, Two lit crew, everybody got their shots. Hold up your shots, everybody. We got our shots. So for the Husky Ticket Project, Paul, who else has been taking these shots before we take them? I know that there's been a lot of people taking shots. Um, Rebecca Lobo, I saw. Uh, Who else? The whole team, the whole uh, women's team did it. The whole UConn women's basketball team, Coach Ariema. Dan Orlowski. Dan Orlowski football quarterback who else um oh um what's his name char uh charlie oh charlie d'amelio's d- dad or the whole charlie, i think the whole squad did it yeah i think the whole squad did it um charlie d'amelio's dad did it shouts to her dad uh we follow uh, each other alum. huh yeah yukon alum so basically the crew the two lit crew and myself of remotely renee we are taking a shot to the husky ticket project for a good cause Let's get it. Shot, 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 shot. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I brought a chaser. I don't know if y'all did. <laughs> you didn't tell us to bring a chaser. Yeah, y'all ain't never taken a shot before. <laughs> bring a chaser. You guys, got, <laughs> you guys got ginger ale? You guys got both got ginger ale? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? That's the best chaser. Yuck. Woo. Ooh, all I'm right. I'm Ooh, smell- that'll, that'll open up your senses. That will- I'm hot. <laughs> all right, all right. So all right. <laughs> after Ooh. that start, it's always nice to take shots for a good cause. So I'm here for it. After that shot, let's move right along to remote scoreboard. I'm curious, there's a lot going on. So I'm curious what Paul picked out of everything going in the world in business and sports. And there's a lot going on in my world. Oh, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But Paul, what you got for us today for remote scoreboard? I got one normal one and two abnormal ones. Oh, normal. Today is an abnormal day. Okay. So what you got for us? All right. So we'll go with the normal one. You know, every year you hear about it. Super Bowl tickets. Uh This year it's even weirder, obviously. And it's even more money. So as as of today, it's an average around twelve thousand four hundred seventy seven dollars per, per ticket. ticket yeah last year it was at only eight thousand so four thousand and then 2019 was four thousand nine hundred so, so this must be double, a case double, of double, supply double. and demand huh yeah. like because tell like how many people are allowed well, yeah, to go to the know. super bowl i don't know whatever tampa bay is you know whatever 20 percent, 30 percent, whatever their capability is right now yeah i feel like they're trying to make up for all the other people who aren't going to be able to go. So it's like $8,000, $4,000 is a huge difference. So even if you have <laughs> half a stadium, four grand more, they're trying to make up for them other seats. So Listen. what in the, what do you, what'd you say? No, but these are, I don't know if these are retail. I think these are, I think these are uh, resellers. That's, yeah, that's normal. But so what did you say, Snookabooka? I said inflation. Inflation at the highest degree. There's not one team, there's not anyone, well, maybe not anyone, but if I'm paying 12000 plus for a ticket, it better be Michelle Obama there, uh, the Obamas, Beyonce better perform as well, I better get serenaded by Jennifer Lopez, like, I, it better have, like, I can't imagine, Cole, would, like, $12,000, $12, if they, whoever wins, I should be guaranteed to party all night with whoever wins, 
I need to come home with an official jersey, gear, <laughs> helmet. I need pictures. I need guaranteed <laughs> followers on Instagram or Who's every buying this? thousand dollars. They oh, believe me, they're, they're partying now. I need to be a part of all this for twelve thousand dollars. This is a VIP That's trip. A- if you go to a concert and you go. <laughs> You need, I need hotel stay. <laughs> I need food. You want, you want to party with Gronk? Who? Gronk? I'll party with whoever for 12 hours. <laughs> I'll party with all of them. Snuck all of them. them. Could you ever see yourself paying $12,000 no. for a no. ticket? No. No. What if it was Renee's I game? I couldn't. I couldn't. Not unless during the game, whenever they scored a test, young girl scored, it was going to run over to my seat and give me some debt. <laughs> <laughs> My snooker book says she wants that fan controlled experience. <laughs> she wants to be interacting, dap her up after you score. Oh, girl. I just like it's crazy because somebody's going to buy that ticket. It's not like they're throwing those numbers out there and thinking nobody's That's the average. A lot of people. The are average. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the high five. side? What's the high side of that? Oh, I don't know. It's probably going to be a lot this year. Oh my gosh! No, you, you think about it. Those are probably seats in the stadium. Think about the people who are getting boosts, like in the in the um, in the oh um, yeah, the VIP stuff, suites, the VIP suites and stuff like that. So Ooh. these are just the people who are going to sit in the cold. These are not the people. These are those bleed tickets. Yes, essentially that. Well, they're yeah. Like, I mean, there's. I, I've realized this though. There's a lot of rich people out there. Like, so you know, I've just realized this over time. YouTubers got bread. Like, there's a lot of people that have a good amount of money. Uh, podcasters got bread. Like, there's a lot going on to where if you got it, I mean, some people say it ain't tricking. If you got it, what else you got for us, Paul? Yeah, there's a lot can't of corp- take it with you. And people got money for what they want to have money for. Bingo. That's and, a fact. <laughs> yeah, and a, a lot of corporations just buy t- like a set of tickets and things like that and give them to their employees. Listen, I'm going to tell you all this right now. One day we're going to be at the Super Bowl remotely where they will film and we'll get tickets and we'll go. And, but it ain't going to be when it's $12,000 a ticket. OK, but we will. That's actually going to be gold. So that <laughs> you just made a goal for me. One day I'm going to be one of those corporations that buys everybody tickets to the Super Bowl. Like what? <laughs> All right, you ready for this one? Um, <laughs> I know you. I know you love cards. Oh Lord! <laughs> so, top tops, the baseball card company, whatever you want, sports card company. Yeah. They came out with the inauguration set today with none other than Bernie Sanders. I know you lying. And it's a nice, it's a nice set. I don't know how many come in the set, but it's a nice set for fifty five dollars. With Wait, is he sitting there like this? The mittens, yeah. Are you kidding me? Poor Bernie. He was a mess. Didn't know it. (laughs) Bernie just went there to mind his business. He didn't. He wasn't there for the fashion show. He wasn't there for nothing but to be in support. And boy, did we get a Bernie. I mean, I even got in on it. If you guys haven't seen. (laughs) <laughs> Bernie's our next guest on the episode. If you haven't seen, check my Instagram out. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Is there a value, money value, anything going on with that, Paul? Oh, it's $55 for this, this nine card bundle, you know, uh, Kamala Harris and- uh, Oh, you gotta Joe get Biden. me that bundle. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Like if it's still for sale for 55, I think I would like that bundle. That's actually, I'm intrigued by that to have a trading card of Mama La, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders. Are the Obamas in there? Not in this one. I think in the there's two. Sets Please tell me they have one with her in that pantsuit. They got, they got. <laughs> they got. <laughs> Ooh, wait. Yeah, what are they wearing on the on the cars? That's yeah, kind of crazy. No, it's it's pictures from yesterday. It's tops now. So tops now does a thing oh. where like, and they had Dr. Fauci like throwing out the first pitch at the beginning of the year with the mask on. Oh, that's lit. I think I yeah. want a collection of all those kind of cars. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, you can do a collage. Put them on. You know, put them in a frame. They just gotta get the. They just gotta probably get the permission and get the uh, Kamala Harris's uh, 
nephew or whatever whatever he was niece's husband with the jordans on oh with the dior's oh my gosh mama's nephew stole the show he came out there stepping he had on a gray suit and he came out there high stepping in the jordan one dior's if y'all don't know about this i found out this on tmz sports Babcock was going crazy talking about the resale value is anywhere between seven thousand and ten thousand dollars. Now we just talked about twelve thousand dollars for a Super Bowl ticket. Now we're talking about seven to ten thousand dollars resale value for a sneaker, and he was walking in them. Babcock said those shoes would have never hit floor for him, hey. but <laughs> what like what kind of shoes do y'all have? Any shoes that set like that you just can't wear? I just I can't imagine. First of all, I would pay that much for shoes because that, the value of those are going to increase because they are rare. They're going to become less and yeah. less available. So you're, it's more of an investment. Me sitting in this seat in the Super Bowl and the day <laughs> being over and I go home with just this ticket that said I was there. And a memory. There is no money left of that. So, but yes, he came out. He was not playing. He, I would have had some plastic or something on the bottom. <laughs> Where you couldn't see i would have cut it and, and like put it underneath so the foot would actually be touching the ground you know what they actually have i've seen this actually they have like shoes that go over your shoes that are like raincoats for your shoes that you zip up i think i saw it on shark tank but there's actually something for that because there's some shoes that are just a little too nice to wear outside so look you got some nice shoes in your closet you got like what you got some shoes that you just only wear on special occasions I think we've discussed this, so don't disclose our secret, but you know my red bottoms. Ooh. Okay, these is red bottoms. These is oh, red. Hey. She said what she said. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, my snookabooka is a classy woman. Oh, Kurt, I, look, she sprinkled a little bit of it down to us, but boy, I tell you, she's like, she's like creme de la creme, and she just lets you know casually, like, well, I mean, my red bottoms don't come out unless it's a special <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well, I My bad, player, player. I appreciate sure real sneakerheads buy two of them so they could wear one and ice one. Oh my goodness, that is crazy! Like one to rock and one to stock. Yeah. I think that's what it, that the saying is. Rock and stock. All right, Paulino, what do you have next for us? Uh, the last one, one that we were going to try, and now we're trying it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to call it remote huskies, since there was a lot of husky news this week. Oh. Uh, Yes, we thought that we would have the Husky News section where we talk about Husky News because the Huskies is doing a lot of things. Shouts to Karan Butler. Shouts to Rebecca Lobo, Birdie, Diana. T We're not even talking about them, though. Okay, we'll talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> well, before Gina. I give the shout outs, before Paul starts, let's just give a shout out to Coach Gino who passed Pat Summit and wins this week. That's my okay. first one. <laughs> <laughs> That we do it, Snookabooka. You break, you steal the lead. He was burying it. You take it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Paul. So, we got that. That one's out of the way. The next one, uh, <laughs> George, George Springer, UConn baseball alum, uh, signed a, a mega contract, 150 mil over six years for the Toronto Blue Jays. And then uh, Jeremy Lamb came back, uh, his first game in over like 300 days. Went four for eight from the from the field and scored ten points. Okay, okay. Husky. So one husky in baseball cashed out. I saw that, and then Jeremy Lamb. I'm glad to see him back on the court. I swear he looks like little Shannon. You you said Jeremy Lamb, right? Yeah. I swear he looks like little Shannon. Like I have to put a side by side photo <laughs> because he really looks like my nephew. So I find myself cheering extra hard for him because it's like, I feel a connection to him. Like he's like my nephew. He looks just like him. It's crazy. Yes. I've heard that before too. <laughs> I like that. Paul, any other Husky news? Snook, do you have any other Husky news? I should say. No, I don't. <laughs> you go get all coy. No. <laughs> So if that's, is that all you got for the scoreboard, Paul? Yeah, it wasn't enough. <laughs> oh, that's great. I just was making sure we're not missing anything because there's a lot of Huskies doing a lot of big things. So I wanted to make sure we got it all in there. Shouts to Kristen. That was just, that was just for this week. I don't know if we already said this, but she got signed to Jordan. Then she took over the WNBA's account. And I always just want to shout her out because she's doing big things. So I think that's it. Is that everything? Yeah, you can go to the next one. 
All right. So next up, we have, we haven't had this in a little while, but we have Hero IRL, which means Hero in Real Life. And this week we have Green Bay Packers linebacker Oren Burks. Now he was the winner of the NFL PA's Community MVP Award. Every year, the Green Bay Packers, it's amazing. They host an annual fundraiser. It's called the House of Hope and it generates thousands of dollars. So long story short, I'm not going to tell you everything about it. I'm going to let Oren tell you about it, but shouts to the Green Bay Packers and shouts to Oren Burke, Hero IRL. All right, so Oren Burks, this is my third year in the league. I play linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, so um, kind of goes back to my rookie year. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'll go back a little bit even further. Uh, so throughout college, I was very involved in uh, a lot of different things off the field, but always wanted to make uh, my platform uh just, just bring it for good. Uh, so I brought that on and going into my uh, collegiate, um, sorry, my professional career. Uh, and my rookie year, I was really trying to figure out ways that I wanted to give back to the community. Uh, so for me, I wanted to see what guys in the locker room were already doing. Uh, so uh, I was actually invited to a gala by Mike Daniels, uh, who was hosting an event with House of Hope, which is the organization I partnered with later on. Uh, so he hosted the event my rookie year. The year after that was uh, another wide receiver. So it's kind of been passed down. So uh, going into my third year, they asked me and my wife if we would uh, be open to ho hosting the event. And obviously uh, with COVID, it was hosted virtually. Uh, so it looked a little bit different than it had in years past. So we had to kind of adjust and uh, find different ways to, to bring funds uh, towards House of Hope. Uh, so their mission is to help women and children experiencing homelessness in the Green Bay area. Uh, so they kind of help them transition to get back on their feet, uh, find jobs, find uh, housing after they transition out of the home. Uh, so it's, it's a great cause that we were getting behind. Yeah, so a lot of the work was done uh, ahead of time. My wife was a huge piece of uh, kind of getting in on their, their meetings that they were doing probably two or three times a month. Uh, I was kind of on the back burner, I'm not gonna lie. Like she, she did a lot of the organizing uh, in terms of just reaching out to donors that they've had that they've been in the past. Uh, and when you think about uh, the gala that was supposed to be like the main event, uh, that's kind of what they've done in the past and moving forward, uh, we had to find creative ways that we can kind of bring in uh, outside donors, other people that might be interested in the cause. So uh, we took to social media, uh, we did a challenge within the linebackers group uh, to see who raised the most money uh, for House of Hope. Uh, and then we had, uh, it was an online auction, so you could bid on different items uh, that we had signed by the guys, Ann Rogers, Devontae Adams, a couple other uh, players in the locker room, and uh, just really just reached out to as many people as possible. So I feel like this year we had a lot, diff a, a lot of different faces uh, involved with House of Hope as opposed to just like the central event that we normally have uh, on, on a normal year. Yeah, no, so for this year, the goal, so they've been hosting the event for a little bit over 10 years. Uh, so the goal was to, for the entirety of the uh, event to have over a million dollars. So we pushed ourselves over that million dollar mark. So that was uh, a huge milestone uh, over the last 10 years. And then for just the linebackers challenge, uh, I think we raised like over $4,000 for that. Um, and on top of the online auction and some other things. So uh, we raised a good good chunk of money this 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 year. Yeah, I would just say being well versed in Zoom, uh, just hopping in and out of Zoom chats. Like today, I've had two uh, two calls before this. Uh, one was with the high school in the Milwaukee area. Uh, I was actually through the NFLPA, so Brandon set that up for me, and uh, we were able to talk with uh, the students at Messimer High School uh, and just kind of share a little bit about my journey, about my my path, and. Uh, they had some great insightful questions about uh, like how to uh, just manage your time, how to have that work-life balance and how do you push hard when, when things are tough. And uh, it's, it's been cool for me to just really just, just broaden my horizon in terms of like who I'm reaching out to and who I'm able to impact. So uh, this definitely kind of changed my mindset about like, all right, I have to physically be there. That's kind of the old way of thinking now. Because in the past, this is Tuesdays, which is our off day, uh, we'd kind of be going to different high schools, hospitals, and different uh, events around uh, the Green Bay area. But now that that's just reached globally now, uh, just with the with the quick call or Zoom away. So uh, in that aspect, I'm I'm really thankful that it's kind of opened our eyes to different ways to get back. All right, I'm Warren Burks, and I'm rocking with remotely with Renee. 
Shouts to Oren for not only getting involved, but also getting his teammates involved. That's not as easy as it sounds. I know that you guys probably think that, oh, yeah, of course, if I do it, my teammates do it. Everybody has their own projects. Everybody's working on their own stuff. So to get teammates involved and make it a group thing, not as easy as it sounds. So Hero IRL goes to you, Oren. I love to see it. Now we're going to move on to remote show and tell. I want to show you guys something because y'all's is in the mail, okay? Um I'm excited. You actually probably already know what it is, but this is what it is. I have finally the hard copy in hand. Red Bull did something, okay? Red Bull did a thing. What did they do? They put me on the cover. Like, it was a blessing. This happened in 2020, and I couldn't get my hands on some hard copies. I'm on the cover, and also, they didn't just do one thing, okay? Red Bull the red bulletin is what it's called. They didn't just do this. They also did this. Shouts to the homie Natasha Cloud of the Washington Mystics. Red Bull did a thing, okay? They put two women on the cover. They didn't make us share the cover, okay? They gave us both a cover. Love that's it. not normal. I just want people to know that's not normal. And I wanted to shout out Red Bull for doing that. That's my show and tell. What do you guys think? Like, this is... This is different, it. you know? I like, love it. Cool. That's cool. And I love it. And I love it even more that's coming my way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had to hook y'all up. Shouts to Austin Gore of Red Bull. He sent me a whole box of them. So I'm going to send a couple copies to everyone's way. But I just always like to show companies and people, not even just showing me love, but just showing women love. I think, Paul, was this the first, I don't want to say a lot, but I think this was the first women's basketball on the cover right of the red bull is that true or false yeah, yeah i believe so okay so this is true so what you guys look well i was just going to say my coffee table you know you how you have your coffee table reading it's getting pretty full with you renee i'm gonna have to get me a <laughs> table for my living room I, these I might, are I might good just have to throw problems. some renee stuff out <laughs> 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 these are good problems to have i will take it we got to get snooker book a new table a new trophy case while we're at it then because cole yeah. not for nothing cole's uh track trophies shay's cheerleading stuff yeah that trophy case is full so the table's getting full you yeah. got a lot of grandkids that are doing their thug yeah. fizzle so yeah you might have to upgrade you snooker. might have a room upgrade you. <laughs> what'd you say have, you might need I a might room have to buy me a tiny house outside. Oh, no. Snook is obsessed with these tiny houses. Do y'all know what she's talking about? These tiny houses? Yeah, we, could, we we thought about putting one down on the property down there where in West Virginia, so when we come, we can stay on a tiny house. Oh my, oh, you know oh, what? Three at a time right now, so. I was just about to say, in this pandemic time, this that actually is perfect. good to have a tiny house, especially with like, you know, the older generation that's a high risk group. We can still come visit. We can wave from the tiny house to the real house. Like, yeah. I don't, not a bad idea. I'm not saying it's a great idea. I'm saying it's not a bad idea. Right, right. Okay, so for Remotely One-on-One, I'm excited because we've been trying to have a large range when it comes to our guests. We've had WNBA player. We've had an NBA player, the world's strongest man, um, politicians, chefs, and now we're going overseas. Someplace I've been plenty of times, but we're going overseas to Manchester City. Zach Steffen, now, I, I mean, I think we can all agree that soccer is probably one of the most popular sports in the world, right? Like, that's, that's like, it's big time globally. Maybe it's not as big here in America, but globally, soccer is where it's at. And Zach Steffen is playing for Manchester City, which... He's big time. I'm just going to say he's big time. Just so you guys know, he's the goalkeeper and he's also the goalkeeper for the U S national team. So I talked to him about the upcoming Olympics. What's it like playing for Manchester city? I talked to him about a lot. Check it out. Great to connect remotely with you, Zach. And I want to thank you because you were actually one of the first people that reached out to me um, after I first opted out. So I appreciate you lending your support, you know, right away. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. It's good to uh, it's good to chat. Okay, so thank you. So I just want to start out with it's not very often that Americans are playing overseas. So how did the deal with Manchester City acquiring you come about? Yeah, it was a uh, it was a long time coming. Um, it probably took about four to five months. Um, but um, yeah, my my agent got it done and. and 
I was with the Columbus crew at the time. Um, and then Greg Berhalter, the coach, um, he, he helped to get it, get it through as well. Um, so it was, I mean, when they first came to me and my agent came to me and said that, yeah, Manchester City's looking at me um, and, and they're interested, I was I was blown away because um, I grew up watching them, uh, watching the Premier League, always wanted to play over here. Um, so it was a dream come true for it to actually develop and happen. And now that I'm here, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I could imagine. Um, and what was that like? Okay, because I played overseas for 10 years. So there's such dramatic differences, just living in America, just the normal, like a dryer. I know you you guys probably have nice places, but overseas, a lot of times I was, I was just washing the clothes, hanging them on the heaters. Like, oh, what has your <clears throat> been like from the U.S. moving to the U.K.? Yeah, uh, I mean, the U.K. is pretty similar to the U.S. In, in a lot of ways. It's obviously different. Uh, like you said, Europe is uh, is different. U.S. is very much more modern and, and um, or a little bit extra over in the States. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, it's cool. It's, it's cool just to be over here and, and be young and be able to check out uh, a different culture and, and meet different people that I normally wouldn't be able to meet and, and play with these, these players that I, I have just been watching for, for years and years. So um, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And it's, it's, it's obviously, it's not easy to be away from friends and family and, and what you're used to at home and all that, but it, it, it definitely is uh, worth it. Definitely. And so we've seen it a lot, you know, in the news and even most recently to some games happening with racism in soccer. Have you experienced anything in the UK or been a part of any of, of the games where you took a stance? Uh, I've never been a part of a game where there was racism by fans or, or um, uh, another player or referees or coaches or anything. Um, but I mean, I have been subjected to comments and direct messages um, via social media. Um, and that's really, um, that's really all that I've gotten. And before that, um, I mean, growing up, I was I was pretty privileged. Um, I didn't have to deal with any any really racism that I that I knew of, um, or, or um, what's going over going, going on over in the states, police brutality and that stuff. Oh, I like that. Then. That's good. I'm glad that you haven't. And so I want to yeah. show you playing in the Champions League because that's a big deal. And what was it like? Like, do you remember on your debut? Like what, what was that like? You got the dub. So what just newcomer coming in? What, what was the, the feel? Uh, I mean, obviously there's nerves. Um, but I mean, at the same time, it, it was nice because we were already through. Um, the game really was just about all about professionalism and, and playing at home, getting the win, um, making sure we, we, um, yeah, got the maximum points out of that group. Um, Obviously, it was amazing to, to debut Champions League, play again for Manchester City, play at home in the, in the Etihad, um, play with those guys. Um, that was great. Uh, obviously, it would have been a lot more, uh, it would have been a lot louder, um, a little bit more passion if there were fans there. Um, but, I mean, you can't really complain. We're, we're still able to, uh, to perform and do our jobs. So what, I'm just curious, to date, what would you say your your best memory is to date just I know it's not alone but what what would you say do you have any cool stories um meeting players talking to players like any cool stories oh. throughout my whole life well just well I would just say or just I'll since being you, over here yeah I'm gonna say since being over there but if you have a cool story just in, no. in general I would love to hear it you know podcasts are stories so storytelling I mean <laughs> It's uh, since being over here, I mean, it's obviously this year and with COVID and everything, it's just been so different. We didn't have a preseason um, where we usually have some games and, and some, some time off where we'll go out to dinner or, or we'll, we'll go out for a few drinks as a team and, and kind of really get to know your new team better and your, and your, um, your, your teammates better. Um, we haven't had that even just living here during the season, living in Manchester, we even ha we haven't had uh, a dinner out or or uh, a gathering um, as that, a team. How do you think that's affected, like just team chemistry? Because I'm the analyst for the Hawks here, and it's kind of the same. They have nine newcomers, and it's kind of hard to get that meshing. So, how has has COVID like slowed almost the chemistry process down? I mean, I would say yeah, in some ways for sure. I mean, those those. I mean, for me at least. 
those times, those dinners, those, those bondings, that's like the best time for me. Um, and, and to get to kind of get, get to know your players and, and your friends and your, your coworkers, um, off the field. Um, I love that. Um, just as much, even, even more than, than getting to know them on the field. Um, so uh, yeah, COVID has definitely, has definitely, um, hindered some, uh, chemistry, I would say. All right. So listen, first of all, Zach, your setup is nice over there. I'm just going to, I know everybody was looking at it and thinking it. I'm going to say it. They got you set up nice there, my brother, but shouts to Zach. Thank you for coming one-on-one with me. Exciting stuff. I love expanding and I feel like I just expanded to the soccer world. I love it. Now we're going to move on to remote reviews and we haven't done this in a while. They don't even know we're doing it. I just kind of sprung it on them. But for remote reviews, I want to talk about the inauguration because there was a lot going on. It was a show, basically. And I want to talk about the show. Look at the relief in their faces. And Paul, I don't even know if Paul saw it, but there were some heavy hitters that showed up for the inauguration. Uh, let's for starters, the Obamas. There was Bernie Sanders, Garth Brooks, J Lo, and A Rod. And one of my personal favorites. Amanda Gorman. And if you don't know who that was, it's the little girl that recited the poem. I don't even know if she's a little girl. I should say the young lady, young lady that recited that poem in the yellow coat with the red hair band. I mean, shut it down. And I, I want to add to that. When I first like went to her profile to follow her, super like respectable following, she's exploded. Okay, she's at like 2.5 million right now. She blew up as she should. I mean, that she got up there and she was talking that talk. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yes. We'll be seeing a lot of her. Pretty much we'll be seeing her in the future. Snooka Booker, I know you was front and center for the inauguration. What are your thoughts? What did you like? What, what did you see? Well, you know, I've watched a lot of inaugurations. I usually watch every year, regardless of party, who wins, because I just think it's a part of history that we, you know, you get to know a lot about different uh, things, both political, historical, and that kind of thing. And uh, this one was just so different because of COVID, naturally, and oh, yeah. because of the insurrection that had happened, which made the uh, fan base so much uh, smaller. And I can remember what, for when was it about eight years ago? Uh, my family we took a bus to the inauguration for Obama's second. Oh yeah, I forgot you did that. Yes, and one of the main thing, one of the kind of delightful things about that was we were out there on the uh, mall, the Washington Mall, and they had the screens up, the big screens up, and they were showing Ellen DeGeneres. She was up there. She was talking, and all of a sudden, I heard Renee talking. And so on the bill, on the, uh, uh, what do you call those, Tron Jumbotron. thing? Jumbotron. The Jumbotron, we looked up and there was Renee playing basketball with Obama. So that was pretty, pretty cool. I, I uh, about that. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, this particular inauguration was different. And I, I really liked the, uh, the star power, star power and that everyone was able to take advantage of like the evening, that inaugural program in the evening. That was really well put together. Tom Hanks and whoever else. Oh yeah, Tom Hanks moderated it. And uh, the main thing I liked about it was it wasn't a me, me, me. It was like a you, you, you type of program where uh, Joe Biden kind of just uh, talked about America and that's what he wanted highlighted the people. So that was pretty cool. Love it, Cole. Did you see any of it? What did you like? What did you see? I loved it all. Um, Vance, my seven-year-old, was so excited. He sat and watched the whole thing with me. Like, they actually, they're teaching these kids a lot differently than they taught us because they watched it in class, like, watched some of it in class, and they were actually pointing out what this person's position was in the government what this like person's that. position was. You know, we just learned there's a president, there's a vice president, there's a president of the Senate. We just learned what the positions were, but not necessarily understand these are actual people. It was just yeah. more so this is, these are the people in the government. So their school actually showed them. And then the rest of it, he sat and watched it with me. I loved it because he kind of knew what was going on. And I said, what seven-year-olds? But a lot of them do. Yeah, uh, it's a new so age. It's a new type of thing. So my next thing is, is that, with, like you said, with the poetry, the singing, arts. We're taking arts out of schools. 
And then when we do things like this, everything is art. You think about even just like the jumbotrons, you're talking about just the art that the people had on the clothing. Oh yeah. Talking about everything that we're talking about is art. And that's the, that was my- Poets, the musicians, that's all Musicians, the bands and all that is art, the arts. And they're taking those out of school. So what are they going to have left for like Vance's generation of kids? Like if you keep taking and stripping these things away, kids don't know they like poetry because they're not exposed to it. Kids don't know they can play instrument because they're not exposed to it. Kids don't know they can make clothing. We're talking about shoes. We're talking yeah, about bags shoes. and yeah. outfits. Everything hmm. that's a performance is art. And all the inauguration is, is people in art. It's entertainment. And I so love, I kind of oh, That's such a good different. point. I love I, that. And, and you're right. Like that's, that's what we're kind of chopping when budget cuts come. That's what we're kind of chopping. But I used to write, I used to literally write poems like, for real, for real, like got one published, like really used to write. And it was a thing then too. Like my teachers were encouraging me to get it published. So I like that angle. Paul, did you even, did you see anything? Uh, Paul didn't yeah, so I watch TV. I don't think so. Did you see anything, Paulino? Yeah, I don't own, I don't have cable anyway. So me neither. I, <laughs> I just, I mean, I seen all the Twitter stuff and obviously the Jordan thing went like viral and then uh yeah. obviously the bernie sanders meme <laughs> the meme like it's so funny the internet will find a piece why were they making fun of jayla though huh why are they making fun of jayla well and hey, wait what did you ask paul <laughs> another thing why with garth brooks, garth brooks i thought it was awful that they went crazy about saying he had hair plugs or whatever <gasps> i mean they missed the whole message there he really you know i'm not a big country western fan did a great job singing Amazing Grace. I mean, it was really moving. He did it a cappella. And then I look online and look on social media. Everyone's talking about these hair plugs. Well, I wasn't even looking at his head. You know what I'm <laughs> Oh, Snook a Booker, this is so funny because Snook doesn't know the internet is undefeated in a sense that the internet will make fun of everything, any and everything. No one is exempt and the internet will find it. I didn't notice that either. Snook a Booker, you broke the story to me. I didn't see that either, but I don't doubt it because I saw people saying, whoever hired j-lo that'll they're they're on the line now or something and i'm no, like the thing is it's diversity you had a country western singer you had a latina female singing you had i mean and i mean they're a talking black, about teen black teen doing a poem poetry. you had you know the police officer who saved basically all these people escort you had like a nice hodgepodge yeah. of america in the inauguration so if you was if you had time to look at that man's hair like that <laughs> then you know what you weren't paying attention anyway you were just looking for something to troll people for and that's all Facts. i got to say that's Facts. all I got to trolls say. will be trolls i that's love it. it i love it i love it I, I yeah i agree i love the inauguration i didn't get to see the party i know that common was at the party and other people uh katie perry was at the party the party was popping and i was working with the hawks where we got a dub, so I'll take it. Um, Snookabooka, remote roots. I don't even know. We haven't even talked about it, so I don't even know what Snook has me for has for us for remote roots, but I'm always excited because she's like, I want you guys to know too, Snook will forever be Professor Montgomery. So when she does these remote roots, she prepares for them. Like she looks up stuff. She makes sure her dates are right because Professor Montgomery likes to know what she's talking about. So what do you have for us, Professor? Well, um, I think I'll get back into some of the uh, husbands of Fanny Pearl. With yes! this and so I'll jump to my actual grandfather, Will Smith, uh, who was her oh. friend. And uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm, a new, I'm new to Twitter, I'll tell you that. And so I follow Kelsey Trainer now. And, uh, she had something interesting on there the other day that I didn't really even, I never even heard of. It was called a gotcha day. And so oh, yeah. uh, I tell real quick my gotcha day story. Let's hear, well, okay, I, well, tell us what gotcha day is. Gotcha day. Is. So gotcha day is for those individuals who are adopted or raised by someone other than their biological parents, the day that they actually got cooked up or whatever. And so I have a gotcha day, and my gotcha day is August the 14th, 1953. 
And uh, I was seven months old on that day. And my mother had passed away on August the 10th. I was seven months old. And so my grandparents, Will Smith, my fourth husband, and my mother, my mother's mother and father came to the uh, funeral. And evidently they didn't like what they saw in New Jersey. I was born in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And, uh, you know, back in the day, old folks just told you what they wanted you to know. They didn't tell you everything. So even to this day, I'm kind of leery about a lot of the stuff that surrounded this. But I do know this story because it's been told so many times. So after the funeral service, uh, my grandfather, my grandmother, who lived in McDowell County, West Virginia at that particular time, decided they were going to ask my father if they could take me for ice cream after the funeral. And so... Huh? Seven months old. <laughs> Seven months old. They wanted to take me for ice cream after the funeral. So my my father said, yeah, you can take her. You know, we'll meet you back at the house. You know, when they got me in the car and got me situated, they didn't get any clothes. They didn't get any bottles. They didn't get anything else. They took off for West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. 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 <laughs> And what? this is and this is real talk, you guys. Like this is for real. Keep going. Steph. And so I guess you know, back in the day, they didn't have no Amber Alerts or they didn't oh. have any way of tracking or whatever. And so I guess it was probably three years before my father located where I was, and uh, my grandfather, my fourth grandfather, and my my her fourth husband and her fifth husband were kind of really stern people, and with what they said, they meant. And so my grandfather said, if you come down here, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> and so he never came trouble. down. Trouble, you're in trouble so now. My gotcha day is August the 14th, 1953. And, uh, you know, back in the day, if we had internet and all of that, I might have been able to track my family back down. But to this day, I've never seen my father again or any of his relatives. But you know what? I think God knew the best plan for me. Yeah. and. I ended up here. So that's so my guess. Just to sum it up, sum it up in case you guys didn't understand, my Snook's grandparents essentially people could call it kidnapping, but they took her because they wanted to remove her from the situation she was in in Detroit. Um they didn't and New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey, I'm sorry, New Jersey. They didn't ask permission. They didn't say, do not pass go, do not collect $200. They put my snooker book in the car. They drove the car to West Virginia. And that's how I was born and raised in West Virginia because that is where <laughs> snooker book stayed. Gotcha. That well, is that was gotcha. nuts. <laughs> is that not crazy? Look, I'm, I'm confused and concerned. <laughs> Exactly, but they took such good care of her. Snook is spoiled rotten, by the way. Another thing that I want to add is whenever you have situations like a gotcha story like that, where the, the paperwork doesn't add up, well, let's fast forward to when I wanted to take Snook a book with me to meet President Barack Obama. Boy, did they flag Snook up left <laughs> and right. We had to jump through so many hoops to get Snook into the White House because her paperwork was not adding up. So just the gotcha story really came back because they were we they were asking for birth certificates. You know, when you go to the White House, they have to basically do a background check on you. They don't want just anybody in there. And yeah, they hit me up. Uh, UConn hit me up like, uh, not UConn, I'm sorry, Minnesota hit me up like, yeah, we need some additional information for Snook. Uh, and I was just like, oh my goodness. So yeah, that gotcha story is real, the real deal. Um, my Diddy has a story where- I was they about to the say, Daddy has his, one too. Huh? Paperwork back then was very shady because Daddy had a whole different birthday for how long and didn't yeah. know it. Like, they went overseas know, and was like, that's not your birthday. <laughs> this was a different time back then, for real. Like, you know, today is hard for us to fathom because this stuff would never happen today. But yeah, Snook was essentially kidnapped by our grandmothers and the rest was history. She lived happily ever after. We still live on the property that my Snookabooka's grandparents had. So yeah, that's, I love that story today, Snookabooka. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to remote roses, and you guys do not need to get out your notepads today, okay? Not for this remote roses. So for remote roses, no need to get out your clipboards. I'm giving out roses to the folks that showed up and showed out for my Snooka Booker's birthday. 
Okay. <laughs> like I just, I really, I really want to give them some roses. Actually, let me throw them some roses as I start sharing my screen. Happy birthday. We hope you have a wonderful day. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Bird. Happy birthday, Bird. Hi, happy birthday from the Porterfield family to you. Hope you have a great day. Hello, Brilliant and Montgomery. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I'd like to take this time to wish you the happiest of birthdays. Just wanted to say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Auntie. I hope you enjoy. Happy birthday. Berlita, we celebrate you today and we wish you a coming year filled with many inspiring moments. As you celebrate this special day, we ask the Lord's blessings upon you. I want to wish a happy birthday to you today, Bert. Hey Bert, this is Carla. Just want to say happy birthday to you on this very special day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to ya! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear bird! Happy birthday to you! Hey, bird! Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Bertha! Here's to many more years of health and happiness. Have a great day! Happy moments, happy thoughts, happy dreams, happy feelings. Happy birthday, Bertha! Yay! Okay, okay. <laughs> so we gotta give out some roses. Yay! Everybody showed up and did their thug fizzle. That turned out shouts to my 13 year old junior who is like cutting up clips and putting oh. them together and making it nice. Um Sukabuka, what do you think about your birthday? She didn't know this was gonna happen as you guys no. can tell. Genuine. Genuine feels. Shouts to wait, and, and before you start, Snook, shouts to Cole and Shay because they got all those, they got, they messaged everyone, got the videos together, and all I had to do is just hand them all to Junior. So shouts to Shay and Cole for getting that all together. I oh, mean, thank you all. That was just so moving. I really, that really, that's wiped me out. <laughs> who, are, who are the two people that you were, you were like super surprised? I saw two. <laughs> Well, my doctor, doctor for one. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> doctor. <laughs> doctor I knew that one. <laughs> Shouts to Dr. Kennedy. Shouts to our pastor and our first lady, Reverend and Mrs. Polk. Oh, man. Who else did you see, Snook? My mentor, Dr. Irvin Griffin, president of the college. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, shouts to Shay and Cole, man. They oh. got it together. They were Facebook messaging. And shouts to everybody. I know a lot of people aren't even used to making videos. So that's why I said I got to give them some flowers because people showed up and showed out like they had their videos together. They had the family in there. Happy birthday, my snookabooka. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Thank you. I mean, that really is <laughs> We're going to post so that on, uh, on your Twitter. Oh, yeah. What did he say? So we're going to post it on your Twitter. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're going to post this on your Twitter. We are going to make sure that we show love back to the people that showed love to you. But listen, that's all we got for today. Um, I am I missing anything? I don't want to miss anything. I, think this I just have a lot of questions for you guys. You got now. a lot of questions? Ask them. Oh, not right now. Not right now. Oh, no. I would like to actually hear one of your questions, Paulino. This is great. Um, we have a couple All right, more. I'll, I'll just ask a quick one because I. how the heck did you guys get your doctor to do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't even get it. I can't even call my. I can't even get it. Let me answer. Let me, Paul, let me answer like, your question. It must be a West Virginia thing or something. No, no, no. Paul, let me, ask you, let me answer this question for you. So my mother's doctor and her are friends on Facebook. <laughs> they talk about clothing and how they dress. They exchange um, designer ideas on, oh, do you like this? Do you like, so they're not the normal doctor, patient, uh, you know, friendship. This is, this is more so like, they are really, really good Let friends. Let me tell so you, Cole is just one. Say this. She, uh, I've had some serious medical conditions and I didn't miss a step because of her she got me to the right specialist right I mean no hiccups people said it took me two or three years to get to this surgeon to get this done it took me like 
two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. That's what I was going to say. Uh, I I like to show love to the Dr. Kennedy. Uh, we love you. We I love, love you because Snook will text Dr. Kennedy if something's bothering Snook. She'll text her doctor and they'll have her in there the next day. That literally happened the other day. So that is a fact. Snook a book. That's what I'm saying. People people treat you the way you treat them. So that's just a testament to you, Snooka Booker. That's, that was, oh, you got any other questions? You could, you could send that testimonial to her show. I'm sure she'll put that on her website. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. And it's actually like, I mean, it's it's true. I wouldn't say it otherwise, but yeah. Any other questions, Paulino? <laughs> oh, I got mad questions about the, the <laughs> yeah, no. grandparents taking your, yeah. <laughs> Well, right. ask it because people might have it and yeah, we do have some time. Questions. So what, what is it? Oh, or actually, all right. So I'm like really good at like finding different people. You think you would want to know uh, other family members that you didn't I, know? But I, I would like to know what happened to my father. His name was Archie McCord, by the way. That's why I don't know what my real name actually was. Uh, Cause my grandmother had great powers and I don't know. Uh, what? Uh, you know, wait, wait, wait. Uh, like your real last name or your real first name? Uh, my well I know my real first name I don't know if she's moved that Smith uh, from a court or not I don't know that and I've been to the courthouse and whatever and not been able to get a lot of you know good uh, information because you know back, back, all you would do, all you, uh, back in the day all you would do is you would go to the courthouse and you would just tell them you know and then that's what they, was. they would put down like my husband's birthday being wrong is because they went to the courthouse and the woman wrote it down wrong. So, you know, back in the day, uh, things were a little bit different than they are today. So you know, Archie you're from, you're from, So you're from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Asbury Park, New Jersey. I was born at Neptune Hospital there. In I partied in Asbury Park, New Jersey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, said he's party. he said he's partied there before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. This is interesting. So if anybody's listening to this, I would love Paul. Uh, I know VP, he really is good at researching. That's like one of his hidden talents amongst the many. But if anybody else is listening, find Snook's family. This is pretty cool. This is intriguing to me, Snook Abuka. Like I've known this story all along. I didn't really know that you wanted to find everybody. So let's find Snook's family. Like I'm really intrigued. Archie McCord, and is that what you Archie said? McCord, M-C-C-O-R-D, I believe is how you spell it. I looked in, I saw it in one of my grandmother's Bibles at one time. As I said, you know, she didn't want, they didn't want to disclose anything. I don't know, uh, The my mother was very young when she passed away, and I don't know if they attributed her death to him. I don't know about domestic violence back then. Mm. That's why I kind of have in my mind that there was some domestic violence stuff that went on and that's the reason for all of you know what happened but reason for the run that's the reason for the gotcha yeah mm -hmm. so yeah the I gotcha yeah the just so everybody understands the gotcha was a protection um so when you find him it might not be good news but it's still you know we'll news. know it's still news mm -hmm. yeah, but i'm saying you guys probably have cousins and things like that you don't even know oh, I have brothers and sisters i don't know about I, i've actually uh, found uh, uh, two sisters and a brother I didn't know about from my mother's side uh, when I was 25. <laughs> wow. They they Great. found me. They found me. I was. This is, this is sounding like one of those MTV shows right now. I'm <laughs> telling you what, remote roots might turn into a a, a mystery. mystery search. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm blessed. All I can say is I have no fault with my grandmother. I love her to death and. My favorite thing is my girl, Fanny Pearl, because she really took care of me and she taught me so many things. When I went to uh, graduate school for my master's in counseling, mm -hmm. I had a very easy time because my grandmother was a great reader of people and told me so much about how to read people and this and how to do that. And, and Snook has passed that on to us because I think, Cole, I know you know too. I think that we are experts at like just filling a situation out, reading a situation, extracting the people. Patient. All right, so we're just gonna leave it right there. I'm interested in if VP can find Snook's family. Yeah. Yes, my Snook book was kidnapped, but in the best way possible. You guys, we got a show here. I'm intrigued. Okay, so we'll catch you next week where we connect while being remote. Remotely, Renee.